Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. It has been a long day, but I wanted to shoot this before I turned in because <clears throat> I have other things to do in the morning, and this was kind of on my mind. Uh, I I checked one of the news aggregators that I that I check, not Drudge, and uh, I see that. The war in Afghanistan, America's longest war, is over. Of course, we left a bunch of people there, didn't we? Um, can you imagine what's going on with them right now, what's happening to them? We just left them. Just left them. Our country's good at that. Our politicians are good at that. It's not our military. It's not our people. It's our politicians, and they're awful good at that. Like they left a bunch of people back in Vietnam. Most people don't know that. Most Americans, you ask them now, <clears throat> they don't know anything about that. We left a lot of guys there. It's like we lost, we left a lot of guys in Korea. People don't know that either, but we did. So the war in Afghanistan is over. No, it's not. We're gonna be, we're gonna be involved in stuff there for as long as there's money to be made. But I'll tell you what's over. That's America. America is over. Now there will be some who who say, well, America's been over for a long time. And I have to agree with that. I, I put myself in that camp. My feeling that America was over goes back to the 90s. You know, we, we, we live in the United States. Most of us, not all of us. I mean, I know there's, there's a lot of you out there that watch that are, you know, live in Canada and Australia and New Zealand and Europe and and places, uh, but most of us live in what's called the United States of America, but it's not America, hadn't been America for a long time, I know that because I grew up in America, and a lot of you did too, I know there's a lot, of, a lot out there, <clears throat> you guys that are my age and some even older, <clears throat> <laughs> most younger. <clears throat> but I grew up in America. You know, people will say that America is a, uh, it's a state of mind, it's a place, it's a, it's a, uh, a collection of, <clears throat> of, uh, values, you know, of independence, of, of a hard, strong work ethic, of, um, responsibility, personal responsibility, of opportunity, of, you know, if I'd sat down and written a list, I'm sure I could come up with a very long list of really what America was about, the the ideals that it was based on. It was, uh, it was, it was put together by some brilliant men. Our government was put together by some brilliant men. And it probably lasted longer than anybody could have hoped it to. Like Ben Franklin himself, when asked what kind of a government they had given us, replied, a republic if you can keep it. And see, most of our people don't even realize that we live in a republic because they think it's a democracy. But... <clears throat> 250 years of uh, increasing corruption, increasing division, increasing loyalty to political parties over ideals, which Washington warned us against that. Our very first president warned us about political parties. Yet they've been responsible for probably more of the destruction of our country than anything else I can think. 
Uh, I'm sure there are some other things out there. Feel free to share your views on that, and I probably won't tell you that you're wrong. But the America that I grew up in, and many of you did, for you younger people, uh, it was uh, an idyllic time. Now, not for everybody. There were some people that had hard times, but most of us lived lives pretty much like you would see on Leave it to Beaver and Andy Griffith and things like that where uh, families were together. Children were raised by a mother and a father. Uh, dads worked. Every dad worked. And many mothers worked. Dads came home at the end of the day at five o'clock ate dinner with their family and uh, and the kids grew up playing uh, playing on the sandlot and playing baseball and scouts going fishing and doing things that are American and we we watched cowboy movies and and shows, cowboy shows, on Saturday mornings. And uh, every one of those shows had the good guy winning. And every problem was solved in either 30 or 60 minutes. And every show, whether it was a, a cowboy, or leave it to beaver, or anything else, always had a moral lesson. And they were important moral lessons. They were American moral lessons. And that doesn't mean that people in other countries don't have those same morals. I know that they do. But this was America. And those values that were displayed in those the, that media reflected the values that children were taught at home and they were reflected and expected and enforced society wide if you were down the street and you were doing something that you shouldn't be doing Mrs. McGillicuddy would shake her finger at you and say Stephen you know better than that and, uh, and Stephen wouldn't give her a smart answer. He'd go, yes, ma'am. And Stephen would stop it. And so it was reinforced. And it was reinforced by the teachers. And it was reinforced by the churches to which everyone went on Sunday mornings. Some on Saturdays, but most of us went on Sundays. And people were civil to each other. People were polite. Children weren't, children weren't rude to adults. Here's our street racer. There he goes. That was fun, huh? And it was a feeling. It was a very good feeling. It was a very comfortable feeling. There was no drama. You didn't hear about horrible things. There was... Uh, 30 minutes of news every night, local news, and then 30 minutes of national, or maybe it was the other way around. I think the national one here in the Midwest started at 5.30, and and uh, then you had some local news. And, you know, fathers sat down and watched the news, and then that was it, and nobody discussed too much about it. We knew about what we thought was all we needed to know, and kids didn't pay attention to it. And now people can't get enough of bad news and things to worry about, and there's plenty out there. It's the biggest money maker there is, is, is selling. I mean, I think, you know, se selling fear now is probably makes more money than selling porn. Who knows? But both are up there, and we've gone from contentment and morality and functioning together families to fear and porn. And you watch what the kids watch on TVs today compared to what they, not my kids, compared to what they watched 
back when I was a kid and you were a kid. And look at what uh, grown men do now compared to what they did back then. Back then they worked. They acted like adults. They talked together appropriately. Um, and occasionally they might go to a, to a baseball game. But other than that, they were with their families. They were, um, you know, went to uh, holidays and events and, th and things like that. And nowadays, what are so many of the men doing? They're spending their time watching other men do things, playing with balls. What, what, what kind of a deal is that when a nation is, is full of men, so-called, who will spend time watching other grown males play with a ball? And these guys can go back and tell you all their averages and where they went to school and what their record was, who their coach was. and what. That's insane. It's insane for a grown man to care that much about a game played by other grown males and then to go out and spend a whole bunch of money on some jersey so he's he's wearing another man's name on his shirt. That's prison stuff. And women, they used to be mothers. And wives, the the foundation of the home. Milk and cookies when the kids got home from school. Remember that? And now look at the things they're absorbed with. I won't go into that. I'll just criticize my own group. But the things that women, so many women, are absorbed with today. And so it's, it's, it's no wonder the kids are are afloat. The kids are watching trash on TV. The kids are watching things and doing things their parents don't have any idea about. They're 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 rudderless. They're leaderless because they're being I almost said raised by, but unraised, non-raised by so-called parents who don't have an understanding of the basic values and principles themselves. So, our society has gone in the toilet. And America, as we think of America, is over. It's over. There is no bringing this thing back. So what do we do? I say that we minimize the damage as much as we can. I know what I do is I separate myself from it from the world as much as I can, which is mostly. I watch it so that I can protect my family from it. I surround myself with like-minded people. I work to build that number of like-minded people around me. And I get ready for what I think the next thing is going to be. And I think what that next thing is going to be is going to be, you know, you can call it a collapse, you can call it a division, a split, whatever. But it's coming faster and faster and faster. And it's going to, I won't say be here because people will say, it's already here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, a lot of it is already here, but not all of it. It's not all here yet, but all is coming, I think. And the only option I think we have is to 
fight as it continues to decline in order to build our numbers and reduce theirs and then be ready to try to rebuild something out of the I gotta choose my words carefully here out of the no I can't say that either out of the bottom of the decline and to keep the opposing forces from being able to affect us and in that we have to be ready in every way probably not a lot more that I need to say and I you all understand exactly what I'm saying I think but I think that our thinking about America it hasn't been here for a long time it is something that we should try to rebuild but not within the current system, because it can't be done. It is corrupt to the bone. It's corrupt, it's rotten to the core. And um, when that's the case, you just throw it out. Anyway, I'm going to turn in. <coughs> um but that's what I think about, and that's that's what I'd love, you know, tell me your views. I'd love to hear your views on it, but that's what I think people ought to be thinking about now. Um, what is America to you? What was America when it was America? And, um, and how do we, do we recreate that for those of us who want it? And we do want it. We're not going to let these yahoos on the other side uh, uh, completely destroy our lives and everything. That we'll, they can go destroy their own. Let them go destroy their cities. I don't care. I don't care anymore. They can destroy themselves all they want. Matter of fact, it'll make it easier on us. But we need to think about what we want to build. So, I'll leave it at that. Just like I always say, we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. Preparing well means preparing to build what we want to come next. So, you all have a good night. Let me know. Give me your thoughts down here. I've just been real uh, happy to see the quality of the conversations that are going on now. So, uh, Look forward to seeing your comments, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.